Hey everyone, I want to talk to you today about your annual administrative agreement. So just one second. <clears throat> so basically what you'll be doing is at the beginning of the school year, you will meet with your administrator. It's bigger. You will meet with your administrator, administrator um, your principal and your assistant principal or one of the two and you will come up with an agreement on your, how your school counseling program is going to benefit the school. And you're gonna kind of break down the agreement of how you're going to spend your time, et cetera. So this occurs at the beginning of the school year and it outlines the goals and school counseling of the school counseling programs organization. And it helps the school program, counseling program align goals with the school-wide goals in a formal meeting with administration. So it's a great way to get buy-in and get feedback and suggestions about the program and can help provide information to the administrator about how, how the school counseling program can benefit students. Um, so this is, you know, this is where you might request um, the SIP. Actually, what I would say is go in you should have your SIP already. You should be working on your annual goals and then kind of go in with a draft of the goals that you want to have and see if that's in support. If your administrator's in agreement, that would support the school goals. Um, so you want to utilize the template in advance as a draft. So there's a template for this meeting. Um, you should schedule the meeting within the first two months of school and you should discuss your goals the content of your school counseling program, your use of time and calendars, and you should obtain signatures from um, the administrator on your annual outcome goals, um, et cetera. So the document is created and signed by the counselor and administrator in the first two months of school. It reflects the program's mission and student outcome goals, and it lists the school counselor's specific responsibilities within the school counseling program, such as student caseload and program components and activities. And it identifies areas for school counselor professional development. So here's why this is really important. So if we are going to follow the ASCA national model, which we should, and provide 80% 80, 80 of our time in direct service to students, we need that administrator buy-in about what we're doing with our program. It makes it really transparent and really clear. So if we go in with an annual calendar of all the activities we kind of want to do for the year, we go in with our goals for the school counseling program and how we're going to address that through data, we go in with our mindset and behavior competencies and how we want to address them. Um, then not only does that really impress your principal, but it also gives them an idea of your role. Sometimes we are, as school counselors, teaching about our role as we go along, and we're advocating for our role. So <clears throat> it's a good way to share with your administrator your plan and your breakdown for how you're going to be spending your time, what you're going to be doing in your role, and um, how you're going to do it. And, you know, it, it shows your program's mission and the the goals that you have so that there's not really a question later about why are you doing this activity because you've already shared that in your in your meeting so of course look at your implementation guide read your do's and don'ts and utilize the template um, I'm gonna go ahead and close this out but I want to show you the template so I have it in here Okay, so here's your template. As you can see, you've already looked at the school data, you've kind of created a draft of the goals, you've looked at the, the priorities and you've come up with some things. And based on the priorities, you've created these specific goals. Um, you're giving a breakdown of how you want to spend your time and every school is different and this might be a negotiation with your principal obviously you want 80 percent right here um, and then you can kind of negotiate the rest based on the needs of the school um, uh, yeah so and and again this really helps you advocate for your role because 
this is based on the ASCA national model. And so it, it even states right here that this is what's recommended. So this can really help you. Um, but this is where you kind of go into your ratio and caseload and you can talk about, um, you know, the student assignments and how many, how many counselors there are, all the students in the building, demographics, kind of breaking it down by the numbers. And then here's your program implementation plan to address the priorities. So you're going to attach the follow, following documents for review and discussion during the conference. You want to discuss your classroom and minds, classroom and group mindsets and behaviors action plan. So you're creating that action plan, um, you know, at the beginning of the year. So you're, you're letting the principal know which standards you're going to be addressing. Um, you're closing the gap action plan and your annual calendar. You're going to talk about your advisory council and when, you know, who might be on that committee and when you're going to be meeting. And you talk about professional development. So this is a really great way to plug anything that you may want to go see. So let's say you want to attend a conference. You want to go to the Texas Counseling Association Conference or the Texas School Counseling Association Conference. Um, and I have been told that you can get some funding, I think, through WFISD, if that's something you're interested in doing that in doing and you're employed as a school counselor. So this might be something that you would want to put on here to see if you could go. That would be pretty awesome. You could really learn some great tips about how to implement your program. Um, it's also a great way to network and stay connected in the profession. So I highly recommend putting that on there. Um, it's a way to negotiate your materials and supplies. I mean, you're gonna need some supplies to, to um, do your guidance lessons, to engage in activities, um, especially if you're you know, doing some events and you need food for it, like a parent information session meeting or something like that. Um, I know I asked, um, and sometimes you don't get it from your principal, you might you know, reach out to the PTA, but your advisory council or you can ask for help in your advisory council meetings, but I know I asked the PTA for a play therapy room and I got it um, one year. So that's a really awesome way to build counseling supplies or materials that you might need. Um, but to have a plan for that at the beginning of the year is awesome. Even if it doesn't come straight from your principal, it's just good to have that on there. Um, you can also, you also want to talk about your school counselor availability and office organization. Um, so, you know, when you're going to be in your office, et cetera. Um, it's also good to put, put a big calendar or sign on your door that really shows, you know, where you are. Um, a lot of people use magnets, like, you know, to put like, oh, in the classroom, I'm here, walk on in or in with a student, please don't come in. So that way it kind of helps people who are approaching your door know when they can come see you. And roles and responsibilities of other staff and volunteers. So um, you would just kind of outline some of those roles and responsibilities here. And then you would sign it. You'd get the administrator to sign it and then the date. So this can really help you shape your program. And obviously just thinking about this before you go in helps shape your program. So it's really useful and a really important meeting to have at the beginning of the year. Um, so yeah, that's how you, you complete your annual administrative conference agreement. Um, and of course, if you have any questions, just let me know. Thanks so much. Bye.